Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with ADT Astro and today I am excited to bring you the Saibon SC311 Wi-Fi camera. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, and that brings us to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys, for those of you that like unboxing videos, here's the box and here's the camera. Simple as that, right? Um, but anyway, the box doesn't really come with anything besides the USB cable and the antenna when it's shipped, it's not screwed in. It is actually nice that you can remove the, uh, the antenna. Um, as we'll get to later, you can actually use this as a wired camera as well. Uh, battery life on this, and it does have a built-in battery, so you can use it without, you know, having to plug them to anything, which I find very nice. Uh, it's rated at about four hours. I've never really ran it for the full four hours. Uh, I've, you know, used it for probably like, you know, one or two hours at a time. And it's lasted plenty for that. So I think for most of you scenarios, the battery life's plenty long enough. Um, just briefly, uh, the camera does come with a two megapixel sensor. So that's a 1920 by 1080 is the top resolution that you're gonna get out of this. Uh, the ex maximum exposure time on this thing in the app is um, uh, five seconds. Um, and as we'll get to in part two of this video, we'll see how long of an exposure that we could take in sharp cap with this camera because you can use this camera with sharp cap, thankfully, as well. So having said all that, let's get outside and see what this bad boy is capable of. Alrighty guys, welcome to the observatory. So equipment wise, we were using a Coronado 40 millimeter H alpha scope. Uh, that's the top little gold scope there. And then the white bigger scope, that's a TOA five inch uh, 130 uh, Takahashi. So the view that we're kind of checking out here with the app there is through the larger scope uh, in the white light. Now, if you see me kind of struggling there, kind of like, you know, trying to do something on the screen, what I was trying to do is pop up this little menu that I'm working here that allows you to adjust the camera settings. Um, I don't know if this is just my phone or what, but I have no idea how that uh, menu is supposed to come up. I always have to struggle by hitting the screen like a hundred times for it to actually pop up. I think you're supposed to just tap the screen once and it's supposed to pop up. You tap again and it's supposed to go away. For some reason on my phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy uh, 23 Ultra, that does not work. But anyhow, the settings that I'm adjusting there are kind of what's available, uh, which are, uh, you can basically adjust the contrast, the saturation, the sharpness, the brightness, um, of the image. Those are kind of like those metal sliders there. There's also an auto setting and an HDR setting as well. Um, overall guys, uh, for uh, the type of you know, adjustments that I'd want to make on the sun, I, find the, I found those settings to actually be pretty nice. I mean, they actually work pretty well. Um, like, you know, to kind of get the detail that I wanted out of the sun. So, you know, I, I found that to be pretty nice. Um, the other settings that I'm kind of tapping through there allow you to set a set number of exposures that you want to take, kind of like, you know, for a time lapse or something like that. Um, and then there's also an adjustment for exposure, which is uh, from, you know, a fraction of a second to a maximum of five seconds is uh, what's allowed on that. So as you can see, you can tap to zoom. So I found that to be pretty cool. Um, and then you can, you know, obviously, as you can see, take a picture and I'm posting them that picture in right now. So beyond those settings that are on the left there, there's really no other, you know, like enhancements that you can make on the photo. Uh, so, you know, take that for what it is. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, besides the exposure, you can also adjust the gain of the camera. So, um, and you know, I've, I found that like both those exposures for the sun, which would also be applicable for the moon, are plenty enough. Obviously, this would be also, you know, good for, uh, I don't, you know, for, for any type of terrestrial, you know, imaging you might want to do, you could do that. Um, and as you can see, I'm kind of capturing a stack of images right now uh, that I, you know, like potentially could stack in a piece of software to make a better image. So I just kind of want to try that out. And overall, I would say that that worked pretty well.
So as you can see, I'm just kind of, you know, messing around with the focuser on the telescope, um, you know, trying to get a, see if I could get a better focus. Um, and overall, you know, like, you kind of, you know, while I'm kind of focusing here, I will say that the refresh rate when you're sitting by the camera, right, by, by the camera is actually very good. Like, I didn't find any issues with that. Um, you know, speaking on, you know, the Wi-Fi connectivity, um, I will say that uh, overall, um, I was able to, you know, like be have the uh, camera set up outside and be inside in the living room, you know, probably like about 15 feet away from the scope, you know, kind of with the direct line of sight through the window and have pretty good connectivity. So, you know, overall, uh, I'd say that for a lot, for most applications, the Wi-Fi strength is plenty long enough. And as you can see, I'm just kind of zooming around the sun here, you know, to kind of show you different spots. In uh, white light, which is what we're looking at here, by the way, I was using the Herschel Wedge uh, for this. Um, so you can see I'm struggling again to kind of get that menu to pop up. Pressing, tapping, nothing. Just kind of does it like whenever. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, the other thing that sometimes happens, as you can see here, the app just freezes, doesn't want to do nothing. So I've had to, you know, kind of exit out of it and get back into it, and then you have to redo all your settings. So I have had that happen, you know, several times. So that is kind of annoying, you know, that is something that, you know, I've kind of experienced um, before. Alrighty guys, well welcome back. Hopefully that gave you a pretty good idea of what's possible with using the you know app that Cybon uh, makes for the camera. Um, you know, overall, like, what do I think about the camera? Um, I think you know if you're looking for a camera to share views of like the moon uh, with of the sun, you know, with proper filtration, of course, um, or even like terrestrial stuff, guys. I don't know if you can, you know you can kind of see from here, but there's a you know that far bald tree out there that we have. Uh, we have bald eagles that you know come and land on, especially like in the spring a lot. Uh, so I think you know for an application like that, for just taking some snapshots through like a spotting scope uh, for like birding type of stuff, or just like terrestrial photography or stuff far away. This is actually kind of a neat solution because you know you just plug it in. You don't have to like you know have like a um, you know like a cell phone adapter because those are kind of tedious to line up. I mean this you just plug in. You know you can take some snapshots. So for that I think it's really cool. Um, what I do find, you know, really lacking, um, which kind of brings us to this guy here. I don't have this, you know, here for just, you know, show and tell, basically. This is my astrophotography rig, uh, which is based around the ASI Air uh, Pro. Now, what's cool about the ASI Air um, is that uh, you can actually do EAA with this on Deep Sky. Now, obviously, this is a way higher end setup, you know, than you know what like this, you know, camera is just generally. But what I find like lacking from the uh, Cybon setup is that there's no stacking like of any kind built in on the app at all. And I hope that they can, you know, like change that because with the ASI Air, you know, like it's almost as good as Sharp Cap, you know, like the live stacking that it has. You know, I find that like, you know, like sometimes I do set, you know, set up the scope just to use, you know, for EAA. Super cool because, you know, like you can do the same thing. You take your cell phone, right? And you could control the whole camera, you know, like uh, really even your mount, stuff like that from that whole uh, setup. So that's the only thing that I find lacking on this. Which is actually why I wanted to make a second part to this video because um, while I find this camera, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, like the features of it, you know, that are available on the app, pretty basic and rudimentary. I do want to see how it performs uh, with Sharp Gap. So hang tight for the second uh, part of this video. We are in fall here in the northwest, as you can see, it's cloudy outside. So I'm not sure how long it's going to be until I get some clear weather to get outside to do that. So hang tight, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.